2015 was a damn fine year for comics. Damn fine! So let's honor the cream of the crop with my list for the best comics of the year. As in my previous Best Of videos, I'm only going to be honoring titles that debuted in 2015. Otherwise, you're going to see a lot of previous entries from previous years. Also, only books that I've actually read. Squirrel Girl may be the best thing since time began, but I didn't read it, so I can't tell you that. Without any further ado, let's begin. Let's start with DC. Now, they've had kind of a rough year. Their DCU initiative hasn't been faring all that well, despite releasing titles that are more creative and well-liked than ever before. And while I've been enjoying Justice League of America by Brian Hitch, my top pick is actually Black Canary by Brendan Fletcher and Annie Wu. I was really afraid this was going to try and ride the coattails of Hipster Batgirl. But this new punk rock version of Black Canary actually works really well. All the changes and new flourishes they added fit the character in her world. It all just flows perfectly. With Marvel, I almost broke my own rule I mentioned less than a minute ago and gave the award to Secret Wars, even though I'm not reading it. But I definitely will be eventually. Not only has this been a commercial powerhouse, but both critics and fans love this series, and that's unheard of for a recent Marvel event. But there have been an ungodly amount of tie-ins, and it keeps getting delayed. And I'm sorry, but for an event book, that's unforgivable. Especially an event book that's supposed to change the status quo of the entire Marvel Universe. However, Marvel said screw it and started their new universe already. With Brian Michael Bendis and David Marquez's Invincible Iron Man not only leading the pack, but being the best of the bunch. Now, Iron Man is an interesting character because really the best version is the movie version. And with the exception of Matt Fraction and Salvador La Roca's run on the character, no other comic couldn't match the Robert Downey Jr. incarnation. But not only does this new series match the movie version, it does something none of the other Marvel titles have tried to do very well. It remains original while also not changing too much of the characters we know and love. I do want to give special mention to the Star Wars line of comics Marvel has been putting out. These might actually be the best comics of the year, particularly the main title. They not only set the tone for how Disney is going to be handling the franchise as a whole, but also set up brand new universes for our favorite characters to inhabit. Plus, each series is just full of great moments. I really like the first issue of Lando when he sweet talks his way out of getting shot. Classic Lando. Moving on to Image, their best comic came down to Descender by Jeff Lemire and Dustin Wynn, and Paper Girls by Brian K. Vaughn and Cliff Chang. But I'm going to give it to Descender for two reasons. One, I knew about Paper Girls going into this year. I expected it to be good. The sender came out of nowhere. It's heartwarming and heartbreaking. It's mysterious and action-packed. It's definitely the best surprise of 2015. My second reason is that Brian K. Vaughan writes Saga and doesn't need any more recognition as far as I'm concerned. Jeff Lemire certainly does. The best IDW comic of 2015 is, surprisingly, not a Ninja Turtles comic. I know, right? I almost went with their Back to the Future series, which is excellent, but it was only supposed to be a four-part miniseries, and now it's going to be an ongoing. And honestly, I don't know how they can do that, especially with a movie franchise that has a definitive beginning, middle, and end. It's going to be hard to maintain this momentum for so long, but what has been maintaining its momentum, and what is IDW's best comic of the year, is Gem and the Holograms. What? This isn't a joke. Now, I never watched the original cartoon as a kid, and I haven't seen the movie, although I'm very interested to see how they apparently f***ed it up so badly. But that didn't matter reading this. Hell, I've even asked fans and non-fans alike, and they agree that this is everything a gem book should be. Now we just need this new gem to go on tour with New Black Canary, and we'll be set. IDW and DC have done crossovers before. This can happen, hint, hint. Speaking of crossovers, the best Archie comic of the year is Archie vs. Predator. Don't laugh, I have my reasons. Now, technically this was published by Dark Horse, and yes, the Mark Wade relaunch of Archie has been great, but you gotta read this to believe it. It's the perfect blend of Archie-style goofiness and Predator-style darkness, and that ending is probably the bleakest ending I've read all year. And besides, Fight Club 2 is actually the best Dark Horse book of the year. Though I would suggest waiting till it's collected in trade before reading it. It'll help the flow of the story a lot better. But trust me, this is a great mind of a book. Best Valiant book? Ninjak. This is a character that's been around since Valiant's relaunch in 2012. And it's about time he gets his own solo series. It's really good. Finally, I don't read a lot of Dynamite titles. But their current James Bond series by Warren Ellis is excellent and a must read. It's more book James Bond than movie James Bond. But whether or not you're a fan of the books or the movies, you're gonna like this series. 
And that's my list for the best comics of 2015. Let me know yours down below or anywhere on the internet. We're going to have some big changes in 2016. Nothing too big, but there are going to be a lot of shakeups. So subscribe to see that. Like this video. Share it with your friends. Thank you so much for watching. And Happy New Year. And the concept of a secret identity is probably the most important part of this wish fulfillment. The idea that any ordinary man or woman can be somebody extraordinary. Nobody can fly like Superman, but most of us work 9 to 5s like Clark Kent. And it's nice to see somebody who looks and acts like us because it makes us think deep down, maybe we are special too. But yeah, Star Wars, um, it's back. It's as good as it ever was. Thank you so much for not screwing that up. Uh, I will probably be seeing it again before this goes up. So I recently just got The Art of Star Wars, The Force Awakens. Yeah, how is that? It is amazing.